So glad that you're here. Real quick, turn to those around you. Say, hey, I'm glad that you're here as well. You look great. You sound great. I can hear you singing. Who sings in this room? Yeah, that's good. I was expecting way less. So congratulations. You guys are doing great. Let's continue worship together. Come on.
It's so cool to be able to get together in this room as a group of people that love and support each other through whatever's going on in each other's lives. We're here for each other, and I'm so thankful for that.
you guys can have a seat for just a second. I told the first service, you guys got the ladies this morning. Let's pray real quick. God, we thank you so much uh, for just everything that you're doing right now in this room. And God, we just thank you that your presence is being known, your presence is being felt. And God, we just ask that we just keep that going for the rest of the service. When Stephen comes up here, let the words that he says just kind of speak to our, our hearts and change us from the inside out. We love you so much. We're so thankful that we get all of this, this big chance to just try it again another day. In your name we pray. Amen.
guys can have a seat. Amen. Good morning, Cokesbury. My name's Ashley. I get to serve on staff here. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. I want to say a special word of welcome to those of you worshiping with us online. We are so glad that you're here with us today. Kids, we are ready for you. Kindergarten through sixth grade can all head to the back doors. You guys are going to have a bunch of fun this morning. They were having so much fun at the first service that they took longer to finish than we did in here. So whatever it is that they're doing this morning, it's a good time. Parents, if you want to go with them, you are welcome to. We invite you to do that. Check out what they're doing and learning. Right now, I want to invite up a friend of ours. Martha Parker is coming down the aisle. Here she comes. Come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. (laughs) Martha has been serving as the president of United Methodist Women, now known as United Women of Faith, for the last eight years, and her tenure as president is coming to an end. So we wanted to thank her this morning and also celebrate one of the big projects that UWF does with us here at Cokesbury is our Thanksgiving boxes. And we have a total for you. 478 families are gonna get a holiday meal thanks to all of your generosity. So thank you, Cokesbury. Thank you, Martha. We love you. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. We are so glad that you are a part of our church and that you're not going anywhere because Martha is the kind of volunteer that if we've got a staff person out, the first question we ask is, well, is Martha going to be there? Because if Martha's going to be there, then we don't have to worry about it because she keeps us all in line. So everything that we do here is thanks to your generosity, and we know that generosity begets generosity, and we are just really appreciative of all the ways that you invest in the life of our church. And so we're going to take an offering now. We've got some friends that are going to come forward. We've got some additional ways that you can give that will be on the screen. We just appreciate your investment in the work of God through Cokesbury Church. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this morning, for this chance to be together for this chance to celebrate your work in our community and for the opportunity to be your hands and feet. God, we ask that you would bless this offering, that you would multiply it, that you would bless those who give. God, that we would grow closer to you through this act of worship. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. When you walk
Everybody, it's good to see you. My name is Stephen. I'm the senior pastor here. And if this is your first time with us, really glad that you guys are here, man. What a rapid change of weather in Knoxville, right? Um, I had to drive over to Memphis at the end of the week. Uh, our youngest son was playing football in Memphis, so I got there Friday of '64. I woke up; it was 27, and uh, your boy showed up with shorts and a sweatshirt. And um, I had to go wreck Walmart trying to find every warm thing I could possibly find. Uh, the reason I say that is it's uh, easy on a day like today to just stay in bed. I'm glad that you guys showed up. Um, how about Dina right there? Uh, it's just incredible, man. Uh, you know, sometimes it's easy to, to come to church, and when you do it over and over and over again, you just sort of start to take for granted um, but y'all, we're blessed with some very powerful voices and people who um, want to use that gift to help us experience God. And so I'm just thankful for Dina. Um, you can probably tell by my voice, I've been out all week um, with the same junk that everybody else has in Knoxville. So I didn't get a chance to sit in on the planning session for worship. It's usually a team effort. And so I didn't know till the 10 o'clock service that she was gonna sing that song. And I was like, great, I get to follow that right? Um, but it was just absolutely beautiful. So I hope that you've been, been blessed by that. So we're in this series um, that we're calling Keep It Simple. And the idea is we kind of move toward the holidays now that I really want us to have a, just a very basic, um, simple, if you will, understanding of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. I think sometimes that can get really complicated. And um, so I just want to, it's three weeks, three simple thoughts um, love God, love people, share hope. And I really want those to become um, pervasive around our church. I want them to be our core values, who we understand ourselves to be. And I, I really want when someone asks you, hey, what's Cokesbury about? I want you to just be able to say without even thinking, we're about loving God, loving people, and sharing hope. And it's, it's literally not complicated. That's just what we believe. And so last week we talked about loving God and how at a very fundamental level, it's just, um, it's, it's learning to grow and trust um, that we're in the hands of a safe God, that, that we're gonna be okay. And the more we learn to trust God, the more we love God. And today we're gonna look at the second one, which is simply love people. I wanna start off with a passage of scripture. It comes from Jesus, it's Matthew chapter 10. We're gonna pick it up in verse 16. Um, Jesus is getting ready to send his disciples out. And here's what he says. See, I'm sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to the councils and flog you in their synagogues. You're glad you came to church. And you'll be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. That's tough. Like he's getting ready to send his disciples out for the, the first chance for them to carry this message of, of who Jesus is and the, the kingdom of God that is present on this earth. <coughs> and he gives them kind of a locker room talk so that their assignment is really clear. Now, most of us, you know, we've heard some version of a locker room talk. It's usually very positive, right? Like you try to fire your team up. You're just sort of telling everybody, we can do this. You know, come on, if we do it together, you know, I am my brother's keeper. We're gonna go out and we're gonna storm the gates. It's gonna be awesome, let's go. It's usually this really positive, highly motivational kind of deal. But with Jesus, we get a very different talk. He tells them, I want you to proclaim the message that you've been hearing from me, and here's exactly what you can expect. He doesn't tell them to expect great success. 
He says, be on your guard. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you. Now, that doesn't sound like much fun to his disciples, right? He goes on to say, but when they arrest you, don't worry about what to say. Notice Jesus doesn't say if they arrest you. He goes in and tells them when they arrest you. And then he summarizes this general strategy. He says, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. What generally happens to a sheep that ambles its way into a pack of hungry wolves? It's not good news for the sheep, right? So I'm guessing the disciples were a little bit concerned at this point because Jesus was to say, don't be afraid of those who kill the body. <coughs> In other words, what's the absolute worst they can do to you? Kill you? Well, don't worry about that. That's not a problem. Seems like a strange way to encourage people, right? Imagine if Jesus, just like I sent them, and this is gonna change the world, but of course you're gonna hit massive problems. Much. Some of you will be arrested. Some of you are gonna be physically beaten. Some of you actually aren't coming back. Some of you are even gonna die. But everybody who survives will meet right back here next weekend and debrief, go team. Like, really? Plan. Worst case scenario is they kill you. <laughs> it's what they're going to do to me. But don't worry about that too much. It's not a big deal. I'd have caused that mark. And so the goes, and he asked him about it. And here's what the guy said in the newspaper. When my wife and I were sitting on the front, honks, can we agree? But it is dangerous. And the reason electricity is dangerous is because of its kill the body. We got 178,000 miles. It's weird when you get an email from your car. It's like, this is your Dodge truck, but it's going to last forever. Well, fortunately, Jesus made it crystal clear. Here it is, Matthew chapter 22. It's the antidote for about loving other people. What Paul is saying is that, is that when love takes up residence in your life, love, love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, and isn't always me first. <laughs> Nobody in West Knoxville struggles to realize and their best to impulse and trying to maintain all of their stuff. I mean, what Paul's saying, man, it in them or it can curse them. And there are a bunch of us. We've spent our entire adult life trying to run from the words that were spoken to us without love. See, life, it's about love. It's not, it's not hard. As a child over, the Bible is telling us it's all about love. Life is about love. Our church is about love. Existence is about, he just had flexibly somebody who fails at love succeeds in life because that's the reality of the kingdom of God. So the challenge is just go love somebody. It's not hard. Your agenda aside, don't worry about how they're living their life. Don't worry about how they voted. Don't worry about how they look when you see them. Planet comes to an end. You sit back and you watch. I'm gonna do through you. That friends is a message that our world desperately needs to hear. I don't know about you once, to have conversations, to have experiences, to feel God's spirit working in their life. But I know a bunch that have been loved into that kind of relationship because it happened to me. So this week, you got somebody that needs to experience your love. And here's the day, and you hadn't seen in three years your excuse for why you can't spend time with them. But now, excuse is gone. receive it one more time this morning.